So I'm interested in this question. How do we sound right? It's an incredible phrase that in the English language. That sounds right. That sounds about right. Kind of new modes of thinking about things from a different perspective. And how does it help me as a musician sound right? And that's what I'm interested in exploring. And this is a long collaboration with Matthew Yu King, who's there. Matthew, wave your arms. And I've worked with Matthew for 20 years. And uh, he's the kind of force behind, behind the software that I'm going to tell you about and play with at the end of the talk. Um, what does it mean to sound right in music? Well, let me, let me play some of my heroes and what, they took, what they'd say. I think that's the most profound thing I've ever heard anyone say in music, that I arrived at myself for every note I play. And it's, it was, um, I, you know, watching time, anyway, I'll go on. Here's another one of my heroes. I cannot say what I think is right about music. I only know the rightness of it, entirely improvised. And then my new hero, uh, I cannot believe that I didn't come across Cecil McLaurin Salvon. I fell in love. It is like falling in love music when it sounds right. And he asked my family, I play nothing else from the beginning of the day. I cannot believe I didn't. Just, just hear how she connects, as Dave was saying, moment to moment with everything she does. It's completely extraordinary if you don't have never heard of her. I feel embarrassed I've only just come across her. But it sounds right. <laughs> Too much. So what's the current mood out there? Well, as Dave says, just in the last couple of months, uh, we are getting all of this journalism about AI ruining music. And, you know, journalists need to write copy. But there's, there is some fear around here. Uh, and this is just, I think this is literally just two weeks in The Guardian. That was, and I had like 20 of these. It was amazing. It's like you just couldn't turn the page. So there's a lot of fear out there. So what's the mood? The mood is twitchy. There's a lack of trust in the algorithms. There's a lack of trust in the training sets. Whose song is it anyway? There's a fear of being duped. None of us as human beings like the idea that we think we're listening to another human being. We feel a connection. We feel an emotional reaction. And ha ha, gotcha, it was AI. And there's this kind of great fear of AI automating music creation and actually the whole sense of music being diminished. So, so what? Well, here's, the, here's, the, here's one thing I work on in the Institute of AI in Barcelona. And I thought, well, actually, this is an interesting thing to apply to music and AI. Build AI systems. And this is exactly what Dave's been talking about right now. Clearly aligned with human values. Right. So what are our values? I ask you, what are your values as music lovers? You will have them. But I fundamentally believe that music is an unmatched form of human emotional expression. It is a direct experience of human creativity, particularly in jazz and improvised music. That is the kind of excitement for me, that direct connection that I feel with these musicians when I'm experiencing Jarrett or Evans or Cecile. And of course, I want a world where musicians get to play, compose, and perform. I'm an improviser. I'll show you, I'll prove it to you at the end by improvising and then show you some actually some things that people who know about jazz have said about me. I've borrowed some words from Bill Evans here, but my word was authenticity. His word is own sound. Take care of the music. How brilliant. Dave mentioned this, but I'm interested in this moment by moment connection with music and how I make a connection with myself, how I explore that. And my values are I'm interested in setting up challenges. And I'm interested in inquiry and energy. The idea of bringing energy and zest into your playing is really important. And I love playing with other people. There's an excitement, an instantaneous connection, new ongoing challenges, shared experience. Right, 
here is a concert. I want to show you two moments where this happened. A song by me and Francois Pache. Last year, we hadn't played together for three or four years since before the COVID. I do an improvisation, nothing. And then suddenly I just look at Francois and we play exactly in time. It's, I think it's amazing. We hadn't rehearsed that. He knew we were going to start together. So I, that's sublime for me in music. That's kind of why I want to play with other people. And I want to explore. Can I develop, can I use AI to develop any of those sensitivities? Another one is that I was supposed to be, I switched to the Nord piano. I was supposed to do the outro. And I looked at Augusto Sarti, a wonderful professor from Milano. He's not being well. I want to, ah, what did I do wrong there? This is going so well. God. Rob, I think I'm going to be buying you a drink. Let's just try that again. I want you to hear, want to hear that. Do I, why not hear it again? I still think I can come in under 15 minutes. So totally improvised introduction. We, 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 perhaps when I arrived in Milan that day, it's actually not Milan, just outside Mantova. But the kind of sensitivity you have to do that and trust and... I think it's brilliant. And then that's Augusto Sarti there at the front. The idea was I was going to do the outro. But we had this communication and we suddenly felt like, we're, let's do it together. And that excitement, being aware. I think awareness is such an important part of music and, and improvisation. So we just, that, here, 20 seconds. Anyway, bless Augusto. So this is the ambition. I'm kind of in, of course, I want to work with people like Matthew. I, I, want to, I want to, you know, think about ethical, interesting ways of developing AI that emphasize my values as a performer. I want, of course, I want to explore my own creativity. Who doesn't? I, it's a big unopened question. I'm leaving more questions than I'm answering here and provides a sense of otherness. Well, here goes. We're not going to show you the details of the system. Matthew is here. He will be here for the rest of the day. If you want to know, it's downloadable. It's open source. You can use it. Right, so it's, I've slightly elevated this. So there's no preloaded model. It's the program. It's me. We have you know, uh, you know, got instances where we would uh, create a model of something and then reuse that. But that's broadly speaking what the interface looks like at the moment. So what am I interested in? Exploring my own creativity, looking for some connections with my digital self. I'm not going to judge whether that happens because the experience in music is as much for the performer as for the listener. And we have tried to do some very basic experiments. We have a journal paper under review at the moment about the kind of relationship that an audience might have or that people might have with the system. Here, <laughs> Here goes.
So I don't know, you make your own minds up about whether or not that's interesting to explore. Of course, I actually came up this morning. What do I think art? The, the hero for me is John Dewey. Art is experience. And we use AI to support and develop the human experience of listening and performing and writing music. Um, I'm not the first person who's wanted to, to have conversations with themselves. This sublime album by Bill Evans is completely amazing. Again, a testament to extraordinary musicianship. I should say I have been very influenced by our next speaker, Francois Paché. I was lucky enough, this idea of using AI to explore oneself. And I was lucky enough to work on a, not a, not a dissimilar system called the Reflexive Looper, which looked at how we play the different roles in a jazz band. Uh, and there's videos of that online. And I'm, I'm grateful that I got the chance to work with Francois and write, compose with Francois. Um, We've worked on this system now since 2015. Matthew first had a concert on the BBC. That's what it first sounded like. But here's what's, here's, here's what's really interesting to me. A lot of the time, when you have money in research grants or university, you pay musicians to work with you. That's part of the deal. This is rare. Someone came, uh, an established Catalan bark specialist, and said, I want to use your system, and spent hundreds of hours training and using the system to train it and had had a sellout concert at the end of last year. Here's a little bit of it. It's all so hard to get a sense of anything. And I, okay, this is, I asked, what, what, what did you get from using our system? And this is what he said, it was just an email. Said, what did you get? He said, generates new ideas, improves creations, as a tutor and advisor for moments of creative stagnation. So there's clearly a role here. It's just the, the, he's using it to have agency in another form through the system. And this, this sense of um, it, it stopping, it, it creating kind of a flow, again, flow machines from Francois Pache, is really interesting. So, and it's hard. How long have I got, Rob? What am I, where am I? Oh, brilliant. Look, it's hard. It's really hard to build AI when you want to sound right. Here's an example where we didn't get it right. So this is, this is Maria Pia. She's one of the very top European singers. She's sung with all of the greats of European music, including the late John Taylor, the greatest jazz British piano player. And we worked for several days, Matthew, the students, postdocs, Augusto, trying to create something for her. Me or the music? I can't do that. Someone else will have to do that. Here's, here's what's really interesting, right? So final slide, final two slides. This idea of trying to actually say what your values are up front, this is, just, this is from Financial Times, fantastic newspaper. I think someone might be here from the FT today. Um, and look, this is on Saturday. I just read it, went, puts the word, standards, trust, quality, accuracy, fairness, transparency, and says exactly how they're gonna use AI. They're saying, we care about journalism, and we care about our values, these values, and this is what we're gonna do. And I thought that was really interesting. And here's, look, I never get, I've never once shown these reviews, but working with the AI has made me think, aren't these unbelievable? People have spoken, John Fordham and Ian Carr are two of the authors of, of, of Miles Davis and Keith Jarrett. And I get these words like honesty, relish, grace, quality, taste, but what, I want to be more like me, and I want to use AI to get better at exploring my own creativity, because that, for me, is that what really matters. And AI has made me have a connection with those words that I never did before. That's it. Thank you very much.